Tell me if this sounds familiar. You're out walking down the sidewalk. Maybe you're sitting at your desk at work or trying to study on the couch at home. Your pocket vibrates. Without even thinking, you pull out your phone, press the home button, and check the notification. It's your buddy Bob sending you the latest viral video. Your friend Felicia just replied to your new status on Facebook. Etsy emailed you about this cool new craft or your favorite YouTube channel just came out with its best content yet. Whatever it is or isn't, when you click it, nothing happens. It's loading so slowly that that bar might as well not be moving at all. If just hearing about this scenario stresses you out, then you're not alone. Technology has become such an integral part of our lives that it can be difficult to imagine a time when humanity lived without the world at our fingertips. It's become automatic. If you want to talk to that buddy of yours you haven't seen in a while, you hit him up on Facebook. If you want to know the answer to a question, you Google it. But humans are greedy creatures. If you give us an inch, we're going to want a mile. These days, everybody wants more. More entertainment, more power, more speed. But at what cost does that speed come? 4G is already pretty fast. The fourth generation of telecommunication technology was designed with the needs of its human consumers in mind. Basically, we're living in a world where people are navigating information faster than ever before. But we all know where the dead zones are. Pass under a bridge or head out into the country and suddenly that lightning fast loading time you were enjoying before becomes more like a slow crawl of a snail. Like the answer to our prayers, in comes 5G. At 20 times faster than 4G, 5G promises to revolutionize the way we communicate with one another all over the world. People are going nuts. Naturally, some of us are pretty excited, but others not so much. Naysayers are insistent that the new system required for such instant information highway will bring more harm than good. But could faster data actually be dangerous? Is that new iWatch going to make your wrist rot off? Or is it all just a bunch of baloney? Stay tuned to the end of this video to find out. But before we begin, if you're enjoying the video, then feel free to leave a like and connect to that subscribe button. You can ring the notification bell for a chance to be the first one to view new content from my channel. Now let's get this party started. Hmm. Chances are you've at least heard of 5G, but all most people seem to know about the next generation of cellular technology is that it'll be faster than the old one and it's supposed to be officially released sometime in 2018 or 2019. That sounds harmless enough, right? It's just a new system of data. We already have one of those, so a new one shouldn't be so bad, right? In fact, you might find yourself scratching your head, wondering what all this fuss is about. Exactly what is 5G, and what makes it so dangerous? 5G, or the fifth generation cellular technology, is a supercharged network of low frequency radio waves that transmit data from one cell tower to the next, to the next, and to the next. The idea is to create a super connected network with mind-blowingly fast download speeds and unlimited call service. Unlike 4G and all the other generations before it, 5G isn't run by a few spread out towers that hog up massive amounts of space and take the data equivalent of ages to send information from one place to another. 5G is up close and personal. The word towers is actually a bit of a misnomer in this case, since 5G requires its transmitters to be lower to the ground and very close together. In fact, most of the so-called towers will only be four feet tall. The network will be largely inconspicuous, hidden on lampposts and tucked into that little grove in the pole that holds up stop signs. We're talking thousands of tiny antennas working together to bring the fastest internet in human history. By their very nature, low frequency waves travel short distances and dissipate quickly. They don't really go through buildings and they're readily absorbed by rain and any surrounding plants. So to keep this network of ridiculously fast internet going consistently, the transmitters have to be incredibly close together. Having so many towers means that data can be broken down into smaller chunks and sent faster than ever before. The results are less waiting and practically instant downloads. All that sounds awesome until you stop and think about the fact that so much data bouncing around everywhere you go could have some serious consequences when it comes to your health. Have you ever heard that warning, the one where they say that cell phones can give you cancer? What do you think's going to happen when data is bouncing back and forth around and even into human bodies? The main threat with 5G or any cell phone use really is radiation. That's basically what all that data is, information in the form of radiation traveling between transmitters. It's a language our devices know how to translate, but at the low levels of today, it's about as dangerous as a kitten. But to say that that much more radiation pumped into our environment wouldn't negatively impact us is naive at best. In fact, there are several ways this data pollution can hurt us. For one, it gets absorbed into our skin. 
Basically, every single one of our bodies produces an electrical field and studies have proven that our pores act like countless mini antennas, attracting the types of frequency used in 5G and sucking them into our skin. You might think, hey, people with cancer go through radiation treatments every day. Why would it hurt me? The short of it is that yes, radiation can destroy cancer cells and that makes it a fairly effective treatment against the various forms of this devastating disease. Unfortunately, it also destroys healthy cells and unravels DNA. Skin cancer might seem like baby cancer. It's often removable outside of your body instead of in, but it's nothing to shake a stick at. In 2018 alone, there were over 9,000 deaths contributed to skin cancer. That's just about one death every hour, and that's without a steady stream of information fog flying through the air. It's hard to tell just how many people would be affected when this new network goes up, but it's safe to say it won't be good. But the buck doesn't stop there. Oh no. Radiation doesn't just potentially melt our skin, it affects our eyesight. Various studies have outlined the health risk that low-level millimeter radiation, the type put off by cell phones, poses to our eyes. Rats exposed to it developed cataracts, while rabbits were left with damaged lenses and impaired vision. One study even found that chicks exposed to the radiation while still developing came out with damaged eyesight. It's part of the reason why your eyes get so tired after you've been staring at your phone all day and high levels of long-term exposure, say from thousands of tiny towers bombarding you all the time, would no doubt negatively impact your eyes, your children's eyes, your dog's eyes. It's just not good. Not only that, but this radiation can affect our heart rhythms as well. A 1992 Russian study found rats who were exposed showed fast and even irregular heartbeats. Heart disease is already one of the leading causes of death in America, with over half a million people dying from it in America each year. True, much of that is due to poor diet and lack of exercise, but if radiation can make chicks blind, it can certainly cause human babies to be born with heart defects. We like to think of ourselves as more complicated than your average animal, but radiation doesn't care about your superiority complex. Radiation has the power to change everything about you, and not in a cool Spider-Man kind of way. That includes how your body fights diseases. There have been several studies on the effects of low-level millimeter radiation on a body's general well-being. What scientists found is that repeated exposure seriously impacted the strength of the body's cells and therefore negatively impacted its immune systems. Admittedly, they were testing on mice, but like I said, humans aren't as different as we think. Spending every day walking through a sea of active radiation could easily weaken our abilities to fight diseases. If you thought flu season was bad, how are you going to feel when every season is flu season? But enough about us. As disastrous as the effects of constant radiation would be on our bodies, we have the ability to get up and walk away. We could move to the country or design and wear special clothes that shield us from radiation. Even animals might figure it out eventually and move away. Plants can't do that. Plants are stuck bearing the full brunt of the many cell phone towers and plants. That's a bit of a problem because we eat plants. Not only are plants themselves radiation magnets like our skin, but the radiation would also be absorbed into water and that means it would come back down in the rain. Young plants exposed to radiation show signs of stunted growth, necrosis, and high levels of stress chemicals they would normally only produce while they're being eaten. So not only are our eyes and skin going to be full of radiation, our food would practically be glowing. There simply wouldn't be a way to get away from it. Even if you moved way out of town, the radiation sucked into the rain and groundwater could easily make its way to your crops, essentially poisoning the food supply. There would be no clean living, no escape. Not even growing your own food would save you. Then you've got the bees. Bees are already on the decline, but with the presence of radiation in the air and the plants they use for food, their numbers would plummet to extinction levels. No bees means no pollinating, and no pollinating means significantly less food for humans to consume. We're already having trouble feeding our species' growing population without getting rid of 40% of our food supply. That's almost half the food on Earth gone, so we can surf the net a little bit faster. So here's the big question. If 5G can cause all that damage, why are we doing it? Sure, there's the factor of money. Faster speeds means more people putting their phone under a certain service, but we're mostly doing it because the current 4G system is positively saturated. There are just too many of us using it. It's like being on a family plan, but your kids used up all the minutes before you can even make a call. Despite that frustration, is 5G really all that dangerous? I'd say the answer is a wholehearted yes. Anything that can rewrite our DNA sounds like something we probably don't want on every street corner.
If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.